What's up, YouTube? Sorry, guys, for the delay. It's been a minute since I uploaded uh, my last video. This is going to be the continuation, the actually probably the final video <clears throat> I'm going to be doing on my Rad 140 cycle. So this is going to be going through my blood work. Uh, this is the on-cycle blood work I had done just uh, at the end of the cycle. So it was definitely had full effect on my body. And we can see, you know, exactly what was going on. Uh, should be interesting, you know, to say the least. Um, I did actually have base work, blood work done as well. Uh, previous to this, prior, so probably four months before um, I did anything. I had blood work done just to assess what my baseline was and, you know, swear, see, where I, see where I was at. And, you know, to make sure I was healthy enough to even take the shit, right? So... Without further ado, let's jump right in. I had a full panel done, a uh, comprehensive metabolic panel. I had a lipid panel, um, direct LDL, lip lipoprotein, CBC, and differential. So let's get started. First thing we're gonna look at is my lipid panel. So this is pretty easy. Everybody should understand this. Um, okay, my cholesterol on cycle, total cholesterol was 147 uh, milligrams per deciliter. Now the reference, ra reference range for this is 100 to 199. So, you know, it's pretty good, it's right in the middle. So my total cholesterol is actually good. It's right on, even on the stuff. So one thing to note though, is this actually has come down uh, a good amount since my baseline test, which means that the RAD 140 actually definitely lowered my total cholesterol. So my triglycerides were 155 uh, mg per DL. The reference range for that is 35 to 150. So I'm just out of the reference range on this. I always tend to have pretty high triglycerides. Um, this is not something that's because of the RAD 140, I would say. Um, they were high, you know, prior to this test as well. So not really much change there. My HDL, not great, guys. It's uh, 24 mg per DL. So reference range, if you don't know, is 40 to 80. I'm um, 24, so this is low. Now, I always have pretty low HDL. It's kind of genetic. You know, I'm never up there in the 40s or 50s, um, especially because of TRT and everything. I think the highest I've seen my HDL is like 36. So it definitely has gone down pretty significantly. Um because of the RAD 140, definitely my HDL took a hit. All right, on to the next guy. We have the calculated LDL. Uh, is actually only 92 mg per DL, right? Reference range is 50 to 129, so it's actually looking good. But so usually uh, my baseline is like, I think it was 130 or 125 or something. So again, the RAD 140 has definitely brought my LDL down. It brought my HDL and my LDL down, okay? So, and then my VLDL is 31 uh, mg per DL. So it's right on the reference range of 31 mg per DL. So I don't understand the VLDL as much, so I'm not gonna go into um, detail on that. Let's see, on to the next panel. So next on here, let's go over the lipoprotein. So my value is seven nanomole per liter. Uh, the reference reference range is less than 75. So I think the standard for this is like five to 30 or something like that. So, you know, I'm right where I need to be. Let's go back. Okay. Let's go to the comprehensive metabolic panel. Okay, sodium. My sodium was 137 nanomol per liter. Uh, the reference range is 136 to 145. So actually looks like my sodium is, you know, it's okay, but it could be higher. Uh, potassium, I had 3.7 uh, mmol per liter. Standard reference range is 3.4 to 5.1. So again, I'm right in the right in the middle. Uh, chloride, I had 98. Reference range is 98 to 107. 
So I'm good, could be higher. CO2, 29, reference range is 22 to 31. So it's actually a little bit high. Um, see, creatinine, mine's elevated, but it's because of the muscles, right? Uh, I had 1.44, reference range is 0.5 to 1.2. My glucose, so this was interesting. This is actually non-fasted glucose, and I actually had an 89. Um, which is great for non-fasted. You know, it seems like I'm pretty insulin sensitive. Um, I believe last time I did a fasted uh, glucose reading, it was like 70, I believe. Um, so I'm pretty insulin sensitive, right? That's a good thing. Um, the rest of the stuff, I'm not going to look at. Skipping over some stuff. All right, let's go to the AST, right? These are my liver values. My AST was 70, reference range is 10 to 50. You know, at first I was concerned about this. Uh, I thought that it was because of the RAD, but actually 70 isn't that crazy. And compared to my baseline, it's actually about normal. So AST, for those of you who don't know, is um, something that occurs from the muscle. It's like muscle waste. So if you have a lot of muscle or you work out really intensely anywhere near or around the blood test, your AST could be elevated. So I actually hit it really hard before this blood test as well. So I think that can explain it. Uh, my ALT is 35 from 10 to 50. So it's, you know, pretty good. It's usually about 35. It's near my baseline. So to be honest with you, the RAD140 didn't really affect my liver, even at 30 milligrams a day, surprisingly. Um, I thought for sure I was going to see some higher uh, values, but we, we didn't see it. So I'd say I, I tolerated the RAD 140 pretty well. Um, okay. Let's see if there's one other thing I wanted to touch on. That's the CBC and differential. <clears throat> so this is going to talk about my white blood cell count, red blood cell count, and that kind of stuff. Uh, my white blood cell count was 8.68K slash UL. Uh, the reference range is 4 to 10. So, you know, not bad. A little bit high. Uh, red blood cell count, I had 4.89M slash UL. The reference range for this is 4.5 to 6.4. So even though I'm in the reference range, it's actually kind of low. Um, this is something to note because actually I have started equipoise. You know, I'm using EQ. That is my next cycle. We'll go into that later, possibly in a different video, actually. But the reason, part of the reason why I chose EQ is because I had a slightly low red blood cell count and equipoise raises red blood cell count. So this could be, you know, especially advantageous for myself in my current situation. So let's see, anything else to note on here? Lymphs, lymphs are good to know. Uh, lymphs were came in 32.9% reference range, 18 to 41. So looking good, we're not inflamed really, nothing like that. So that's where I'm gonna, leave it in terms of going over this stuff. Really the important stuff to note is how it affected my cholesterol and my liver. Um, so, so to summarize, right, the RAD 140 definitely lowered my cholesterol, uh, good and bad cholesterol. Seems like it didn't have much effect on my triglycerides and it did not have a huge effect on my liver either. Uh, it seems like there was some indication of liver stress, but it's hard to tell whether or not that's from, you know, hardcore exercise, uh, lots of muscle, muscle waste, or if it's because of the RAD140 or a combination. Um, either way, it's nothing to be alarmed of. And um, that was actually me not taking any kind of liver support either. So that was just me taking RAD140 up to 30 milligrams a day on top of a test base as well. <clears throat> so I think, again, overall, it was tolerated pretty well. Um, the biggest side effect I had from the RAD140 was the shedding, hair shedding. Um, I have thick hair, right? I don't want to lose it. Um, 
I don't get shedding from testosterone or really anything like that, but the RAD 140, once we bumped it up to the 30 milligram mark, definitely the shedding was pretty noticeable. Uh, there would be like, you know, constantly hairs coming out. So that was probably my definitely least favorable side effect from the RAD 140. There's was also a slight increase in blood pressure, but it was transient. It went away. Uh, once my body adjusted, I think, to the higher levels of androgens, my blood pressure seemed to stabilize. And it hung out at around 120 over 80, which is fine. I usually run a little lower than that, but, you know, we're okay at 120 over 80, so no complaints there. Um, so that pretty much sums it up for the RAD 140 cycle. We ran it for about eight weeks, I want to say, maybe a little bit longer, maybe it was like nine or so weeks. Uh, titrated up to 30 milligrams a day. The diet wasn't totally on point for the whole cycle. We kind of flip-flopped whether we were cutting or bulking in the middle. Um, there was a lot of birthdays. Uh, my birthday, my daughter's, and my wife's birthday back to back to back. So we had a lot of cookies and shit. We got a little fat in the middle. <laughs> but uh, we definitely turned it around. And the gains were substantial. We put on some muscle for sure. Definitely recomped, uh, got slightly more vascular, definitely harder, denser look. And what's interesting is I actually didn't really lose much of the gains at all after the cycle. What I did was I increased my testo slightly. So we went from 175 to uh, 210 milligrams a week. So 175 to 210 a week. And that seems as though it was enough to hold on to a good amount of the muscle gains and strength even uh, that I experienced from the RAD 140. So definitely for others who are interested in doing something like this, I would definitely consider using a lower base for testosterone during your cycle. And then when you pull the SARM RAD 140, you can up your testosterone dose slightly and it will help you keep on uh, a good amount of the gains from the SARM. So that's all I got for my RAD140 cycle. Um, definitely stay tuned. We're going to be doing lifestyle videos, training videos, you know, PED content, all kinds of stuff. The current cycle is uh, testosterone and equipoise. So, you know, stick around. We'll definitely be adding more compounds to that too. If you made it this far, fuck yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, leave me a thumbs up, man. Comment, subscribe. Got a ton of cool shit coming for you guys. Uh, Till next time.